Did you know we have over a thousand humongous pyramids worldwide, which ends the idea that Africans built them because some countries didn't even have Africans in them when the pyramids were built? Did you know that the alien cattle mutilations, they take the animal first while it's alive, they incubate something in various parts of its body, and then a few months later they come back and take the uh, animal and then drop it back down after they've took the incubated parts away. Did you know that the genuine crop circles were done by orbs, basketball size orbs, uh, and it produces a 400% extra yield compared to the man-made fake crop circles? Did you know we have documentation that was leaked in from the 50s that actually show what the military do when they come across a crashed UFO. It's called Psalm 101. You can look it up. You can actually find all of this information out, plus so much more, from my website, outtruehistory.co.uk. You can search for videos, or you can just click on the video link here. Search for whatever you want. Um, Don't you love Skoranas? That's a new name for numpties. Uh, so anyway, this person's basically saying, because I did a video saying that you can watch a brand new documentary that's an hour long, free of charge on my patreon page this person has wrote never trust anyone who only shares knowledge uh, in exchange for money so basically some of my other videos are on patreon where i charge a couple of pound and i sit and edit weekly every single day in fact i take a day off now i only work four days full time and i do a day doing this videos Plus also I've got a website called outrohistory.co.uk which has all the videos that I do on TikTok put in sets of 5 and sets of 50 and of course this website costs money but if this person's saying I only do it then obviously the free ones here on my website makes this numpty look like a numpty but then obviously if you go to Netflix where you've got this gentleman here uh, paying for knowledge on Netflix I'm going to tell you the real name of God unlike anyone else has ever ever done so we know the actual god is the anunnaki we know that's their race name that's been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt however the anunnaki did mention that there was a creator of everything that's what the translations come out to however no one knows the name i now do i know the name that was given either by the source or creation to the Anunnaki or a name that they gave to this thing. So I will be doing a video uh, showing you who the Anunnaki called or what they called the creation, the creator of everything. So this will be on my Patreon page in the next week or so. Once again, guys, I have now solved yet another mystery with evidence. Did you know we now have the evidence to show who the Norse gods were in relation to the Anunnaki? We now know the ten plagues of Egypt started in Israel and the aftermath was in Egypt. We have evidence that Lilith didn't know Adam at all, but she did know Adamu. One amazing researcher has worked all this out and even worked out the trumpets in the Bible were rockets or missiles. The same researcher has produced a video with evidence proving the Bible was a copy of the older Anunnaki texts the race called gods. He's even given evidence as to why the Nazca mountain range was sliced off and so many more world's firsts. But before you put the laughing faces icon, why not watch just one of these amazing documentaries? Simply visit our truehistory.co.uk and scroll down to where it says click here. Then if you have evidence to prove his evidence wrong, he would love to see it. If you can't, then maybe watch his other videos and learn about our true history. A lot of the Indian texts, the okay. Vedas, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita, the ancient lore of the indigenous... Billy was asked where he gets his information about Atlantis from, and he listed all of those tablets and the Enuma Elish. Sadly, they don't have anything to do with Atlantis. The only ones that you can actually go by is the Emerald Tablets of Thoth and any works by Plato, but we know Plato made a lot of that up because there was no way a friend of his could have remembered four hours worth that's how long it takes you to read one of his books four hours worth of information from a priest that got it from eight thousand years ago including the depths of the lakes etc and the smells around atlantis that's all made up so some of what plato says is uh, possibly real but the rest is made up he was an author by the way so I hope that helps clear up something about Atlantis. Have a listen to this and I'll interject with my own thoughts and research. Atlantean is a specific name of the type of civilization that they built. They built an Atlantean civilization on this planet. 
Actually, the first thing is the actual word Atlantis wasn't the original word. It was another word that I can't pronounce, but go look it up, you'll find out it's a different name. But anyway, carry on with that. And I personally believe after many decades of research and investigation, reading over a thousand cylinder scrolls, tablets, papyruses, uh, ancient texts, and so forth, visiting with ancient sages and wisdom keepers and archaeologists all around the world, my personal hypothesis now is that it's not just Earth that was Atlantis. So bearing in mind, the only two documents really that we have to, to mention anything to do with Atlantis, even though he's just ruled off loads of other things, they're not in those. Uh, the only two things we've got is the Emerald Tablets of Foth translations. We don't actually have the originals. They date back to at least 1,200 years. And the text from Plato, which we know he was an author, there's no way his friend could have gave him four hours worth, that's how long it takes, to read one of his books. Um, the information that his friend got from a priest that got it from 8,000 years ago, there's no way you'd remember all of that, including the smells of what Atlantis was and the depths of the lakes, etc. So Plato's, as we know, um, may have got a tiny bit of information and then you know, added the rest. But there is all these information that Billy's just said there, they're not there's nothing to do with Atlantis, so he's kind of just you get the idea. It was also the moon and it extended all the way to Mars and maybe even beyond. So he's saying Atlantis was not only Earth, it was also the moon and beyond. Now, bearing in mind I've read all of the or as many tablets as I can possibly read, and the only, as I say, the only two mentions is Plato's and the Emerald Tabs of Foth. So how he's come to the conclusion that a sunken city in concentric circles created by Thoth um, ended up being the moon and outside of our... Yeah, I don't get it. And if anyone's interested in actually where the Atlantis is, uh, I'm the only one that worked it out. Now, actually, I do have a sunken city, unlike everyone else. So mine's ticks that box. Mine's actually a sunken city in concentric circles. That ticks that box. Mine actually has a temple of Thoth on it that's also been sunk with it. That ticks that. But basically, I've got 14 points that actually match uh, with, as I say, Emerald Tablets and um, Plato's writings. So that's on my pinned videos if anyone's actually interested. So you can either believe Atlantis from Billy that is the moon, the earth and everything else or go by the only few t few mentions of it and watch my video and make your own mind up. Atlantis, in my previous video Billy Carson said that based off of text that he's read he concludes that the earth, the moon and space are something like Atlantis and I said no because the text that he's referred to doesn't mention Atlantis whatsoever. So I do point out the texts that do mention Atlantis. Anyway, so I basically said that I think his hypothesis is completely wrong. Anyway, this person, as you read in the background there, has said I'm jealous of Billy. Um, now, I've debunked Billy many, many times. I could probably do it every single day on every video he does. Um, I've also debunked museums. I've debunked other mainstream researchers. I, I'm not doing it for fun. I'm doing it because I want the real information out there. You follow me. You know I only want the real information out there. I've even offered Billy... I've sent him emails, etc., saying I'm happy to help you with your evidence, you know, so you don't keep getting it wrong. Never got back to me. So what do you want me to do? Do you want me to lie? I can't do that. That's not in me. I have to give the real information, so no, I'm not jealous. How the Anunnaki knew about our solar system. The race called gods, we know them as Anunnaki, live on a planet called Nibiru. That planet came from outside our solar system. The tablets for this information is in the British Museum. It's called the Enuma Elish, translated by L.W. King. If you want to read this yourself, type in Enuma Elish PDF on Google. Before I explain how the Anunnaki knew about how our universe was formed, we first need to read through the Enuma Elish. I will keep cutting in explaining things. I hope this won't put you off learning about our solar system. The first tablet. When in the height heaven was not named, and the earth beneath did not yet bear a name, and the primeval Apsu, who begat them, and Chaos, Tiamut, the mother of them both. Their waters were mingled together, and no field was formed, no marsh was to be seen. When of the gods none had been called into being, and none bore a name, and no destinies were ordained. 
It's believed that the Apsu was the sun, our sun in our solar system. There was water in space. This is what NASA says about water in space. Enormous amounts of water, in gaseous form, exist in the vast stellar nurseries of our galaxy. The Hubble Space Telescope peered into the Helix Nebula and found water molecules. Hydrogen and oxygen, formed by different processes, combine to make water molecules in the ejected atmosphere of this dying star. This is the translations from the Moore Hen collection. They are pretty much the same as the Enuma Elish translations, but in an easier format to understand. When it all started in the above, there were no gods in the heavens, and in the below, key, there was no name for the firm ground. Apsu, their first leader, was all alone in the void. In the heights of the above, there were no celestial gods yet, and in the depths of the below, there were no celestial gods either. Apsu ruled the void all by himself. Then, his winds mixed the waters of the beginning, and Apsu cast the divine and clever spell over the waters. He slept soundly in the deep of the void. Tiamat, the mother of everything, became his wife. She, indeed, was a mother from heaven and a watery beauty. The mother of everything isn't the creator of everything. Tiamat was a watery planet. In fact, it was an ice planet. Watch my documentary on the Norse gods, where I explain the Norse myth of a frost giant was in fact Tiamat, the planet. Apsu's little Mumu then gave birth next to him, and he gave Tiamat a gift to bring to him as his messenger. Only she can have a gleaming metal, gold, that lasts forever. We are not sure what Mumu was. It could have been a wormhole, portal, dust, or just a huge sun flare, or something else. Apsu gave this beautiful gift to his wife. Then their waters mixed, and they had divine children to bring into the world. The celestials were created in both male and female forms. Lamu and Lahamu were their given names. Then were created the gods in the midst of heaven. Lamu and Lahamu were called into being. Ages increased. Then Ansar and Kisar were created. I have created a family tree on all the planets and their names, and which planet gave birth to which. Please remember, the Anunnaki, gods, always spoke about objects in heaven, which we know is space, as if they were alive. If these planets had personalities and mouths and eyes, this is just how they spoke about them. The first children of Tiamat was Mars and Venus. I'm not sure how a planet can create more planets, but back then, and I'm not talking about 4.5 billion years ago, that's when Nibiru planet came into our solar system. I'm talking about way back when only the sun was here first. I guess as planets were forming, parts may have broke off, creating smaller planets. And over them, long were the days. Then there came forth Anu, their sun. Apsu and Tiamat constructed a house below. Anshar and Kishar were created in the waters of the above when they were older and taller. You will hear people on the internet talking about the firmament and how we are under a dome, an invisible dome, and above that is water. This is because they don't research. They have took passages from the Bible and made up stories to fit instead of actually going back to the original texts. You'll see soon how this firmament is really the asteroid belt. Ansar and Anu and the god Anu. Nudimud, whom his fathers, his begetters, abounding in all wisdom. He was exceeding strong, he had no rival, thus were established and were the great gods. But Tiamat and Apsu were still in confusion, they were troubled and in disorder. Apru was not diminished in might, and Tiamat roared, she smote, and their deeds. They were taller than their older brothers. The two were created to be a celestial couple, and they had a son named An in the faraway heavens. He was their scion. The Anunnaki seem to have divided up the solar system into the word heavens. You'll hear shortly how one heaven 
is inside the asteroid belt, the three planets which includes Earth. There might be seven heavens in our solar system. Kishar and Anshar were Jupiter and Saturn. They had two children planets and was Uranus and Antu was Neptune. Then Antu was brought out, who was Un's equal and would be his wife. Their house was built on the outskirts of the upper waters. This is how, below and above, three heavenly couples were created in the depths. If you are enjoying this, why not watch the full version, which explains how the Anunnaki knew about our solar system. In fact, there's over 150 other long documentaries you can watch. They are on my Patreon page. It's only a couple of pounds, and more content is added every week. Find out why Stonehenge is there. Find out who Yahweh really was. Learn that the crystal skulls are not fake. See Easter Island for what it really is. Understand the mark of the beast and so much more, all with evidence. Head over to patreon.com. Our true history. There's also free documentaries there. Click on collections, then free. Watch an hour long documentary on the Great Flood. Trust me, you won't find this kind of research anywhere else. Thanks for your support. Our true history. Finally, someone's actually watched the video where I keep saying, go see the evidence. Anyway, this person's trying to come back with errors that I may have done, unfortunately. So far, the first one that I've come across was basically saying, why is the book uh, that was written off of translations called Mr. Mesopotamia? This book was done over 100 years ago before we knew about other tablets that correlate and actually back up, plus also temples we found since, plus uh, artefacts, etc. So in other words, if that person was alive today, he wouldn't have wrote myths. Hope that makes sense.